Welcome to Train Freediving. In this video, I'm going to talk about what I believe is the most effective way to practice the mouth fill. The reason I'm making this video is because a few days ago, I sent out an email to my subscriber list asking you guys what your biggest struggles or challenges were in freediving. The most common struggle that you guys seem to be dealing with has to do with the mouthfeel. Almost everyone who replied to me was saying that at some level, their mouthfeel equalization wasn't working correctly and they were struggling to equalize deeper because of their mouthfeel. Being completely honest, the fact that so many people are struggling with mouthfeel isn't that surprising to me. In all of my experience freediving, not just as an athlete myself, but also as a coach, and just as a buddy who's been training with all sorts of different freedivers, I believe that mouthfeel is a common struggle because not many people are practicing it correctly. So swallowing, leaking, running out of air, or still having air in your mouth and not being able to equalize. In my opinion, the exercise selection and the lack of using really effective mouthfeel training exercises is causing a lot of these problems, or at least it's not helping you get over them. Now, before I move on, I want to make a very big distinction between learning a skill and practicing a skill. When you're learning something, your objective should be to make it as easy as possible, break the entire skill down into individual elements. So in this case, glottis control, soft palate control, topping up, squeezing the air with your cheeks. There are all sorts of different things that you can focus on with your mouthfeel learning exercises. You can do dry mouthfeel practice with a nose clip, you can do it with a balloon, you can do it with the EQ tool that connects to your phone, in the water, on shallow dives, you can do it head up on the sled, you can do it in your bed, outside, upside down, on the couch, you name it, there's a way to learn the mouthfeel. And all of these learning exercises lead to the exact same thing. They lead to you having the ability to put air in your mouth and then squeeze your cheeks to equalize. If you really want it to work on your deep dives, you need to practice applying it. In my opinion, there are really only two effective exercises to practice the mouthfeel. And it's not two for everybody. There's one for beginner mouthfeel divers, and then there's one for advanced or intermediate mouthfeel divers. Both of them involve exhale diving in a very particular and controlled way. Now the reason for this is because of what the mouthfeel is for. The mouthfeel is designed to help you equalize below your residual volume, deeper than the point where it's easy to bring up air into your mouth. If you don't practice using the mouthfeel below your residual volume, then you're not practicing the application of the skill. It doesn't matter how good you are at equalizing with the mouthfeel dry, with balloons, or on shallow dives on full lungs. Those are good learning exercises, but they don't matter at all in terms of application and practice. You need to be able to equalize comfortably below your residual volume on exhale dives if you want to make your equalization work correctly below your residual volume on inhale dives. Another reason why exhale training is so important for mouthfeel divers is because even though we're using the mouthfeel, chest pressure is going to play a very big role in how deep we can equalize. If we have too much pressure in the chest, too much compression, not enough blood shift, not enough flexibility, there's going to be a lot of strain on the glottis and air is going to want to leak from the mouth into the lungs. So exhale training also offers a way to increase our flexibility to make sure that our chest is flexible, our blood shift is strong, and that our body and mind can tolerate the pressure at depth so that we're not losing any air during our descent. Now I'm going to tell you the two different exercises that you should be doing to practice applying your mouthfeel. So the first one is going to apply to beginner mouthfeel divers. And in my opinion, a beginner mouthfeel diver is someone who hasn't reached 50 meters as a personal best yet. 
So you're just learning the mouthfeel and it's just starting to be applicable to your diving, somewhere between 30, 35 and 50. The best exercise for beginner mouthfeel divers, diving up to a personal best of 50, is to do FRC or passive exhale dives with a mouthfeel taken anywhere between 5 and 10 meters down to half of your goal. So if you're training for 40 meters and you want to use the mouthfeel on that dive, you should be capable and well trained at taking a mouthfeel at 5 to 10 meters on FRC and getting down to 20. If you want to get to 50 meters, you'll have to be able to do the same exercise on FRC down to 25. The second method, the one which applies to intermediate or advanced mouthfeel divers, divers who are diving deeper than 50 meters with a mouthfeel, are going to use RV diving, as much air as you can get out of your lungs. You should be practicing this exercise until you can safely and comfortably equalize to 20% of your goal without a warm up on RV. Let's say you want to do 60 meters with a mouthfeel. You should be capable of diving to 12 meters on RV without a warm up. That means you swim out into the water, you set the line at 12, full exhale, mouthfeel at the surface, and hit 12. And if you can do that, with no discomfort, no struggle, in a consistent way, so not just doing it once, but being able to do it multiple times, then you know that you have all of the skill that you need to equalize to 60. And for advanced divers, this is gonna continue trying to reach roughly 20% of your goal. There are a few special considerations that I want you to make with both the beginner and the advanced mouthfeel exercise. Number one, and this is maybe the most important one, is that on any exhale exercise, whether it's FRC or RV, you should immediately stop your descent if you feel any pressure on your sternum or on your trachea. The second consideration is that an exhale session is an exhale session. If you're going in the water to practice your mouthfeel, and you're going to use either method one with FRC or method two with RV, that's really all you should be doing on that session. And then the final consideration, in my opinion, this is really important to make sure that you're not overstressing your body, causing too much fatigue or causing too much damage in your airways, is that you should limit yourself to maximum five exhale dives. So whether you are doing FRC or RV, you should only do five of them. Now, as you get deeper, maybe as you start to reach 20, 25 on FRC or 15 to 20 on RV, depending on your level, then you should start to limit yourself to maybe two to three exhale dives during the session. These two exercises are the most important ones that you should be doing as part of your mouthfeel training. It's okay if you wanna do learning exercises like dry mouthfeel, shallow mouthfeel on full lungs, or any of those other variations that you might be able to do. And again, if you wanna make small refinements or any changes to your actual mouthfeel technique or approach, these learning exercises are the things that you should be doing. However, once you choose how you want to do the mouthfeel and you have your preferred technique and your preferred approach, then you need to practice. And in my opinion, the most effective way to practice, depending on your level, is to do some variation of the two exhale exercises that I just described to you. That's going to make sure that your mouthfeel is working correctly and effectively below your residual volume on your deep dives.